It took only hours for Fukushima Daiichi to spiral out of control after the March 2011 earthquake and tsunami. But it's taken many months for experts to figure out what went wrong before, during and after the disaster. A panel has released the fourth and final high-profile report into the accident. It criticizes nuclear regulators and the plant's operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company. Perhaps more damningly, though, it says the government misled the public. The 12-member panel submitted its report to Prime Minister Yoshiko Noda. The experts launched their investigation in June of last year. They interviewed more than 770 people, including government officials, TEPCO employees, and residents who fled their homes to avoid radiation exposure. The experts conclude regulators at the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency were overconfident in the ability of plants in Japan to withstand a severe accident. They say the agency lacked sufficient expertise and tended to focus on specific problems instead of designing comprehensive safety regulations. The report says the government didn't follow established crisis management procedures. It points out officials failed to make the right decisions because they spent too much time concentrating on micromanaging the response on the ground. The experts also looked at how government leaders handled information as the crisis worsened. They say officials actively denied the possibility of reactor meltdowns and misled the public. The report singles out Tokyo Electric Power Company for failing to take sufficient preventive measures. The experts say TEPCO executives lack the will to thoroughly investigate the causes of the accident. The head of the expert panel says the probe into what happened at Fukushima Daiichi and what's still going on at the nuclear plant needs to continue. <laughs> We said the investigation must carry on because the accident is still ongoing. We can't believe an investigation that requires observation for a long period of time should be thrown to its end. Prime Minister Noda says Japan's nuclear industry is safer than it was before March 2011. With the newly launched Nuclear Safety Commission, we will make every effort to ensure that an accident of this kind will never happen again. People who fled the towns and cities around Fukushima Daiichi aren't happy the government has wrapped up its investigation into the nuclear accident. The threat of radiation is still keeping thousands of residents away from their homes. I can't believe they're finalizing the investigations. I don't want them to stop. I cannot return home because of the accident. So the government needs to clarify how it happened. NHK World's Kaho Izumitani read through the report for us. She told us more about what it says and the possible impact. Here she is in conversation with our Gino Tani. Now, the government misled the public. What did the panel use to back up their conclusion? Yes. A day after the accident, mm -hmm. a spokesperson for the nuclear regulatory agency said he couldn't deny the possibility of a meltdown. But the agency changed its wording immediately after the prime minister's office asked to pre-approve any statements about the accident. Okay. And during the weeks uh, that followed, uh, the word meltdown just disappeared from the media briefings. Mm -hmm. In fact, the agency's spokesperson denied meltdown had even happened. Ultimately, it took three months for authorities to admit a triple meltdown had occurred at Fukushima. This raises the possibility of a government cover-up. The panel also says government officials failed to disclose important information on the spread of radioactive materials. They had data from forecasting system, but they didn't pass the information on to local authorities. And as a result, many evacuees were unnecessarily exposed to radiation. Mm. Tell us a little bit more about what experts say, uh, what led to the actual accident in Fukushima. Right, the report is similar to the result of the investigation by the data appointed panel, which came out earlier. Mm -hmm. 
It criticizes the government and TEPCO for their poor preparation and response to the accident. One point that stands out in particular is Japan's failure to enforce uh, global standards recommended by the IAEA. Uh, the authors mention how the regulatory agency refused in 2006 to upgrade evacuation preparedness measures because they feared it would frighten the public. Regulators, regulators justified their decision at the time by saying a massive release of radioactive particles was a remote possibility. What kind of effect could this report have on the ongoing debate over nuclear energy in Japan? All right. We have 50 re reactors in Japan and 48 reactors remain shut down. They need to pass new tests before operators can fire them up again. The chairman of the committee declined to comment on the government decision to restart two units at the OE facility. But the report stressed in their uh, stressed that despite the scope of their investigation, mm. they still know very little about the root causes of the Fukushima accident, along with the health and environmental implications. So this conclusion could raise questions uh, for the public regarding the ability of the government and nuclear authorities to properly assess whether reactors should be restarted. All right. Kaho, thanks for that. Tens of thousands of residents of Shizuoka Prefecture in central Japan believe the question about restarting the nuclear plant in the region should be answered with a yes or a no. More than 178,000 people signed a petition calling for a referendum on firing up the Hamaoka facility. That's three times the number necessary to trigger a vote. The three working reactors at Hamaoka aren't running because forecasts suggest a tsunami could damage the plant. Chubu Electric Park company workers are building an 18-meter high break wall. A citizens group launched the petition drive in May to demand a referendum on the restarts. It submitted the signatures to a local election committee. Members of the Shizuoka Prefecture Assembly are required to discuss holding a referendum if asked to do so by 1 50th of eligible voters or about 62,000 people. I hope the governor and the assembly consider their concerns. Election committee officials will check the signatures for irregularities by August 12th. We're going to use an ordinary garden variety peach with its short, close fuzz and tender skin and a regular regimental hairbrush with its rough, tough bristles to prove to you that the man-sized Remington electric shaver will give you a close, comfortable shave, no matter how tender your skin, no matter how tough your beard. Look at this amazing demonstration. The Remington is so gentle that it can shave the short, close fuzz off a peach without harming its tender skin. And the Remington is so powerful that it can shave the bristles off a brush, bristles tougher than any beard. Remember the amazing demonstration of the peach and brush. For the close, comfortable shave you've always wanted, reach for the Remington electric shaver. Look, here is the new Band-Aid plastic strip with new super stick. It sticks better than any other bandage. The proof? Take a dry egg at room temperature. Touch the egg with any other bandage. Brand X, brand Y, brand Z. Not one sticks. But a Band-Aid plastic strip with new super stick sticks tight instantly. Watch it again in slow motion. No pressure, yet we can lift the egg, even boil it. And the Band-Aid plastic strip never comes loose. Maybe you don't want to broil eggs this way, but you do want the extra protection of Band-Aid plastic strips. They take better care of little cuts and scratches. They stay put. Yes, even in hot, soapy dishwater. Neat, fresh-colored, almost invisible. Band-Aid plastic strips with new super stick stick better than any other bandage. Made only by Johnson & Johnson, the most trusted name in surgical dressings. Be sure you get Band-Aid plastic strips.
Pee Wee Reese has a way with Dodger rookies or Sandlot youngsters. Pee Wee, you do a lot of work with boys. Not work, Al. I like baseball and kids. I enjoy helping teenagers start right. Well, that's around shaving age. And you give them pointers on personal appearance, too? Yes. A boy has more self-respect when he's clean shaved. I tell him to use a Gillette razor, Al. You said it. The Gillette Super Speed Razor. And today there are three. Light for sensitive skin and most younger men. Regular for average skin and beard. Heavy for men who like the heft and feel of a heavier razor. Each is different, precisely engineered. One has the right blade edge exposure, edge angle, and weight to shave you in a breeze. Comfortable, good-looking shaves you may never have had before. And convenient, you change blades and rinse clean so. Choose your Gillette Super Speed Razor. $1.29 with Gillette Blue Blade Dispenser in handy travel case. It criticizes nuclear regulators and the plant's operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company. Perhaps more damningly, though, it says the government misled the public. The experts conclude regulators at the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency were overconfident in the ability of plants in Japan to withstand a severe accident. They say the agency lacked sufficient expertise and tended to focus on specific problems instead of designing comprehensive safety regulations. The report says the government didn't follow established crisis management procedures. It points out officials failed to make the right decisions because they spent too much time concentrating on micromanaging the response on the ground. They say officials actively denied the possibility of reactor meltdowns and misled the public. The report singles out Tokyo Electric Power Company for failing to take sufficient preventive measures. The experts say TEPCO executives lack the will to thoroughly investigate the causes of the accident. We said the investigation must carry on because the accident is still ongoing. We can't believe an investigation that requires observation for a long period of time should be thrown to its end. Prime Minister Noda says Japan's nuclear industry is safer than it was before March 2011. With the newly launched Nuclear Safety Commission, we will make every effort to ensure that an accident of this kind will never happen again. Now, the government misled the public. What did the panel use to back up their conclusion? Yes. A day after the accident, mm -hmm. a spokesperson for the Nuclear Regulatory Agency said he couldn't deny the possibility of a meltdown. But the agency changes wording immediately after the Prime Minister's office asked to pre-approve any statements about the accident. Okay. And during the weeks uh, that followed, uh, the word meltdown just disappeared from the media briefings. Mm -hmm. In fact, the agency's spokesperson denied meltdown had even happened. Ultimately, it took three months for authorities to admit a triple meltdown had occurred at Fukushima. This raises the possibility of a government cover-up. The panel also says government officials failed to disclose important information on the spread of radioactive materials. They had data from forecasting system, but they didn't pass the information on to local authorities. And as a result, many evacuees were unnecessarily exposed to radiation. It criticizes the government and TEPCO for their poor preparation and response to the accident. One point that stands out in particular is Japan's failure to enforce uh, global standards recommended by the IAEA. Mm -hmm. uh, the authors mention how the regulatory agency refused in 2006 to upgrade evacuation preparedness measures because they feared it would frighten the public. Regulators, regulators justified their decision at the time by saying a massive release of radioactive particles was a remote possibility. We have 50 re reactors in Japan and 48 reactors remain shut down. They need to pass new tests before operators can fire them up again. But the report stressed, in their, uh, stressed that despite the scope of their investigation, mm. they still know very little about the root causes of the Fukushima accident along with the health and environmental implications. So this conclusion could raise questions uh, for the public regarding the ability of the government 
and nuclear authorities to properly assess whether reactors should be restarted.